Jezebel. Walk it right. <laughs> Make it play. And so, who knows the blind can't meet the blind? Hello, somebody. Mm. So when you're bound up and you're blind, you got blinders on. When Jezebel come up in your church, how are you going to know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll be afraid of her? Mm -hmm. Because Jezebel is a controlling spirit. Yes. And it's such a thing as witchcraft. Yes, so they come up and they sit up in the churches and they recruit others like themselves. Yes. And they build a stronghold in that ministry. Yes, they do. And that pastor, he began to hit left, right, and center. And he don't know what to do. Because he went out and he started church before God chose him. Yes. You see, he was on the call. He needed to be chosen. Yes. He needed to go through the process. Get your deliverance. Because you can't deliver the captives if you're bound. Hello. Amen. Blind can't lead the blind. Mm-hmm, mm -mm. just about. You're dying tonight. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, but that devil didn't want me to minister tonight. Mm -hmm. He tried to shut me down for oh, yeah. the last week. Oh, yeah. He was, he saw me ministering. Oh, yes, I did. No voice. Mm -hmm. But the presence of the Lord Hello, somebody. was in that place. Hello, somebody. I had to have an interpreter. Mm -hmm. They couldn't even help us. You know what that apostle said? He said, Woman of God, why are you in ministry? I want to fall out a couple of times. And then you had the people come up and you were praying for the people. I saw the earth open and the demons you were praying off them fell into the earth. Mm -hmm. He said, You've got to come back, woman of God. You're coming back someday, right? <laughs> I said, Yeah, I'll be back because one verse. Uh -huh. I was just right there, one verse. All right, we can read it aloud for me. Let's read. Let's read. I'm, I'm going to read the whole thing. And when he's reading it, listen in the spirit. You hear yeah. what I'm saying? Because that's exactly what's fighting New York. That's what's fighting the pastors here. That's what's fighting the body of Christ here. That's it. I'm digging it up. Amen. From uh, chapter 2 of Revelation, from what verse? 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Titeria, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them, with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my Father, and I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Amen. That's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. That's Bible study. That's weeks of Bible study. You, I wanted to stop you. Stick a pin. Stick a pin. Stick a pin. Stick a pin. There is so much in that word. My God. Every pastor needs to read that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> in heaven there is a book of life, right? The book of death, mm -hmm. the book of works. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about, the works. works. You see, so many people are going to church. Their names are in the book of death. They're going to church. You know, I met somebody to the Lord all the way in Jamaica. Because I have a, a, a prayer group of women all over the world, right? But this group was in Jamaica. And I led a woman who had been going to a church for over 30 years. I led her to Christ. Mm. My God. I said, you mean God has to set you up to come on a phone line with me so that you can hear and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Jesus, my God. She goes to church for over 30 years. My God. What are they doing? It's what I ask. I'm like, what are they doing? What, I mean, what are they doing in house service? Is it about souls or is it about... The scripture says Jezebel is going to turn them into idol worshippers. You know what that is? Yeah. The strong man for that is Wardom. Mm -hmm. Jezebel turned them into whores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means Wardom includes men, sex, women, drugs, money, money alcohol, mm -hmm. gambling, all of and all of that. Anything that a person loves more than God, Amen. it becomes a God. I do. You see. So we've been on a mission for you, all right. My God. And we see people with big titles hmm. who have already sold out. Bring it. Come on. And they have us up in our up in their church mm -hmm. ministry, but they didn't know that we were on the Lord's side. Because you can have a whole church Hello, somebody. that the pastor is leading to hell. Yes. Mm. Hello, yes. somebody. And they sit down there going, but I love my pastor. <laughs> the devil is a liar. You fool. You love your pastor so much that you see your pastor taking you to hell and you're not going to stop. Jesus. you got to do something. you got to say something. God's going to hold you accountable when you agree to the bondage. I mean, who am I talking to tonight? All right, now me. Who am I talking to tonight? God is going to hold the sheep accountable. Mm -hmm. Listen, mm -hmm. I'm here to speak the truth. Oh, oh, true. I've seen them people with their big titles mm -hmm. on the mission field. And we're doing revival. This ain't no phony revival. This is real revival. Okay, right. So I'm saying the people come to church and they stay till midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock, in the morning. They don't want to leave church. We just leave the church. They're still standing there for more. Because they've been lied to. They've been lied to. They've been deceived. They never heard this kind of word before. Nobody don't preach like that out here. Hmm. Like what 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 Bible are they preaching from? Hello, somebody. Come on. The people were so revived in their bellies they never wanted to leave church. That's how good it is when it's real. It was delicious. <laughs> yeah. It was delicious to me. Woo! Jesus. Woo! So listen. Mm. Listen to the people. Listen. I'm talking about the Jezebel spirit tonight. Oh, yeah. Now, if you think that, listen, I've already had my encounter with Jezebel when I was, I got saved at 11, and before, as I was 12, Jezebel hit me. I took a hit from Jezebel at 12. Jesus. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't want to get into my testimony tonight because it's go, it could take a while, but I took a hit from, I called it my first go ahead, but it was Jezebel. Yeah. I got my hit too. I got my hit. And you know what? At 12 years old, demons were in my body. Mm -hmm. They were deeply rooted in my body because somebody deposited something in my little 11-year-old body, 12-year-old body. That, that had no business being there. You hear a ministry tonight? But I know what I'm talking about. I lived it. Come on. Yeah. Come on.
Come on. So when I'm talking about them 11 and 12, that's when the enemy gets them. Hello. The age is 12. Hello. The enemy gets them. It's like a magic number. Hello, somebody. Come on. You got to take your children inside and you got to ask them some questions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If they feel comfortable with you, ask them some questions. You're preaching it right. Because it's somebody close to them. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That, that they're supposed to trust. Trust issue. Oh, Jesus. My God. Now listen. I took my hit from Jezebel. Mm-hmm. And I remember when my mother didn't know what to do with me. Because she saw, she heard me crying and telling her, Mommy, I feel things crawling all in my neck, in my chest. Let me tell you, I used to go to school and I was living in an area where it was really windy. And when the wind would blow, my uniform would blow like that. And the wind would just pick up the ears on your skin. It was so windy, right? And we would have to get on the bus and move around people in the bus. And I'm telling you, when I took that hit. Hmm. Oh my God. Even the wind my would God. blow. And it was like my body was like a ticking time bomb getting ready to explode. Oh yes. I can tell you what it feels like when somebody say they had a nervous breakdown. I can tell you. Oh yeah. I've experienced it. I'm not ashamed to talk about it because I've been liberated, amen? amen. And my testimony will set somebody free. Amen. Just like it did when I was ministering to that woman in, in, to that church in Pennsylvania. And that white lady was sitting down there and she said, You know you minister to me as you are ministering. I heard chains falling off of me. Amen. She said, I had a nervous breakdown for years and nobody could minister to my issue. Now let me ask some of these people something. Let me ask some of these leaders something. Mm-hmm. How can you minister to the homeless if you have not been homeless? If you've never been homeless, how can you minister to the homeless? If you've never had a nervous breakdown, how can you minister to those who suffered a nervous breakdown? If you've never been hungry and lacking food, how can you minister to the hungry. If you've never been a hurting woman, how could you minister to a hurting and broken woman? If you've never been a hurting and broken man, how can you minister to a hurting and broken man? There is an anointing that God has placed upon their life to minister to the broken, to the hurt, and to set the captive free. Hallelujah.
That's why the church is messed up. Yeah. The people running here. The running here. The people are looking for some. They're looking for a deliverer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a deliverer. Somebody with an anointing yeah. to set them free from captivity. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Mm. But you know what? Some sell the glory in them. They sell the glory. They sell it out. They sell it out. Oh, yeah. sell it out. Long time. Money. Long time. Money. The presence of God left. Money. Yeah. But they still have the gift. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Repent without repentance. Mm -hmm. Still running church. Still have the gift. And because they have the gift, you're deceived. The presence of God done left a long time ago. Just the gift. And it's just a gift. My but guess God. what? Whose presence do you think they have? My God! Operating in that gift. My God! Virgin. The presence of Lucifer. Ooh. Lucifer is who they're going to church to lay hands on them, to speak into their spirit. Oh! My God. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Just a gift. Someone who has a Lucifer Aaron spirit. Presence of God. Gone. Don't let long time ago. Gone. But they got the gift. Mm -hmm. And God will God will honor them because of the gift. The gift. Because he needs the gift to yeah. set the captives free. He needs the gift to save the soul. Yeah. He needs the gift. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I worry for people who see signs, wonders, and miracles in their ministry, but no presence. I would rather have the presence than the power. Hello, somebody. Amen. 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 I would rather have the presence of God than the power, which is the gift, which is the anointing. To destroy. I would rather have the presence. Because who knows? There is the book of death, the book of life, and the book of words. And more of people in church is going to make it in because their name is going to be in the last book of life. Yes. But they won't be on me. Make it in. But when I go in, uh, I already have my crown. And God's going to want to know, want to know what I did. What work have you done for me? Where's the work? And I can say, well, you know, I used to have prayer conference line, and I minister to a lot of people, and all my prayers have gone on around the world, and people have been delivered and set free from the, just from the prayers. So I've done a lot. Work. I got my crown. Yeah. What little did he give you? Hello, somebody. He gave me a voice. He gave us a voice. The voice of deliverance. Ministry. That's why the enemy fight my voice. Always. My too. Always. The voice of the intercessors. Mm -hmm. It's gone all around the world. You know many people have been touched by that? And we don't have a building. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Watch what happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm laughing. <laughs> but <laughs> God is doing some mighty things. But nobody see us in the building around here. Ain't nothing going on with them. When they, when they ever going to do something? When they ever going to? Weird. There's a whole lot of going on. Yeah, yeah. A whole lot. Listen, it's all about what's going on in the spirit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People have been delivered from demons and devils just by the phone, just by the audio. Cockroach is calling all the people here that have been living in their here for years. People vomiting or vomiting of demons that have been living in their system just from the prayers on an audio. My God, the Holy Ghost is real. It's not by might. No. It's not by power. But it's by my Spirit of the Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's my message. Yes. yes. I, have to, I have to keep reminding myself of oh, that. Yes. Oh, yes. So it can keep me grounded. Yes. Because I don't ever want to be a God. No. No. That thing will keep me grounded. Danger. Not by might, Althea. It's not by power. 
I'll be out of this vibe. I love it. Oh God, I love it. And so I tell people when I minister to them, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by the Spirit of the Lord. Do you believe That's that the Spirit of the Lord can do it? Oh, watch God move. That's my prayer. God moves. Yes. God honors that. Yeah. Because I have a fear of God. Hello, I, remember, I remind myself of yeah. it. Yeah. It will keep me growing. Yeah. It will keep me walking yeah. under the humble hands of God. Thank you. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Mm. hey. Mm. My God. I said they wanted a car payment this week, right? Hmm. I just say. Hmm. I'm not going to tell you, I, I, I'm crazy. <laughs> but if you call me crazy, I'm crazy for the right reason. Hello. I'm crazy for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just mad about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, because he's done so much for me. Yeah. Oh my God, when the enemy wanted to kill me, God kept me. Come on, come on. They couldn't kill me at 12. <laughs> so I went and I lived. <laughs> The American dream. Oh God. I had the cookie cutter house oh in the suburban neighborhood. Oh and I had the cars. I had the more the BMW and the this. I like three cars. And what we do with three cars? Come on now. The children raised in the in the so you know I mean, please. But I had issues. Mm -hmm. I had issues. Brilliant. Running my business, teaching school, flying up to New York, working in the soap opera, and being on the radio, doing this, but I had issues. Still, my God. But when I rededicated my life to the Lord, after Jezebel kicked me out here of 39, no, 12 to 39, he kicked me out here. I said, Lord, but I felt so. I was. You know I felt, I really felt bad. I'm like, Lord, can you imagine what's so foolish? I got lied to for so many years and I didn't know it. Mm. You know, I really, I said, Lord, I need you to give me some years back. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, Holy Ghost is real. Oh, yeah. I said, Lord, I need the years back because I need to wake some souls. And Holy Ghost came and spoke to me in a wee hour in the morning. I said, I'm giving you 50 more years. This is when I was, at that time, 42. My God. My God. I said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I got a little greedy. Hmm. And after the Lord said, I'm calling you to the prophetic. It's time for you to prophesy. Hmm. I was afraid of that thing. Uh, I didn't want to embrace that at all. Because hmm. I didn't want to be a lying prophet. Hmm. Hello, somebody. I didn't want the blood of the people to be on my hands at all. Talking <laughs> my language. And I remember when I yielded to the Lord, I said, Lord, I'll accept it if you teach me how to be a true prophet. So I left it like that. But God took me to where Timothy got stoned my, to death. My God. But then the Lord gave me revelation. He said, Timothy never felt the pain. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He was already caught up. He never felt the pain. Caught up. Oh, I was like, okay, Lord, you gave me peace with that. So I said, okay. I know that there will be persecution with yeah. this gospel. It's I know coming. that there will be persecution. Prophets get persecuted. Oh, yeah. Major. Left and right. Major. Left and right. Jesus, my God. I'm telling you. You think these witches in the world are here in New York don't want to... They, they, can't, they can't kill me because God gave me the word. I got greedy. I said, Lord, give me some more years. And you know, the Lord came back to me in a vision and he spoke loud and clear. I'm giving you 50 more years. I said, thank you, Jesus. Why? Because I have a work to do. He's called me to go to church and the gates of hell shall not prevent. I'm going to make sure why do you think I'm alive? I'm alive because I have work to do for God. If he didn't have work for me to do, I would be dead long time ago. But I decided to follow Jesus. And when I decided Oh, Jesus. My God, you get me. You gave me more years. Yes, my God, you long life and life. Life. There's life. Oh, yes. In Jesus. Hello, somebody. I'm here to tell you. Hello, somebody. There is life in Jesus. <laughs> so I gotta get busy. I gotta get busy. Find me some souls. I gotta win some souls for the Lord. 
Because that's why I'm alive. Hello. Okay, I'm not afraid of the gospel of Jesus Perfect. Christ. Perfect. Call me crazy if you have to. The more you call me crazy, the more I realize that I'm on the right path. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Woo! My Jesus. My God. You all ready to go home? Yeah. You sure you're not ready to go home? Come on. <laughs> I'm telling you. Jesus is sweet. And when the Lord is on your side, who can be against you? Come on. Nobody. Nobody. Let me tell you something. You know, if there is no reason for a child of God to be sad, no. depressed, worried, crying, there is no reason. Because God Jesus. Hello. The Lord is on your side. He'll make the impossible possible. I told you that they said I had to pay the car payment by Monday, right? Hmm. And I said to the lady on the phone, I said, look. Um, <laughs> I said, lady, you're going to get your money. She said, well, Miss Williams, you know, um, can you give us this much by today? Can you give us this much by Friday? Can you give us this much by... I said, lady, I told you that you are going to get your money. In Jesus' name, you're going to get your money. Yes. You're going to get your money, yes. woman, by Monday, in Jesus' name. <coughs> you know how many times I've said that? When I was trying to get that license, that TLC license. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, that devil fought me so much. He fought me, he fought me, he fought me. And when I, when I spoke with the lady on the phone and she said, come on in. And when you come, just join the line. As long as you get here by a certain time. I mean, I was delayed like three months. The machine broke. And when I finally got up in there, it was another story. But when I got there, at the time she said to get there, I saw a long line run, right around the building, around the block. And I said to my husband, well, how am I going to get in? So I got out of the car, I waited and I joined the line, and when I joined the line, I noticed everybody had a number. I said, where did y'all get this number from? They oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. They said, you didn't know? Well, you have to come to get the number one day, and then you have to come back with your number the next day. I said, that lady didn't tell me that. I said, well, what am I going to do now? I'm not going to get in. After making several trips there, I said, you know what? In Jesus' name, I'm going to get a number today. I don't know who I'm going to get the number, but I'm going to get that. I'm a child of God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. I'm stretching my faith today. I don't know who I'm going to get the number, but I'm going to get the number because they've already shut down taking applications, you know. They don't want to be taking any more applications for the end of the year. Within that year, yeah. so I said, I've got to get a number. I went inside and I faced those two officers. You know, they're like demons. They stay in there. Of course they're demons. I'm like, well, um, you know, I called and they told me that I should come by a certain time and I should be able to get in. But I know these people have numbers. Is there any way that I can get a number? <laughs> no, you cannot. You've got to come back. And this and this and that she was me. Demon from hell. And I said, well, lady, I'm going to get a number today. She was like, no, you may. I said, yes, I am. And she said, no, you I said, lady, I'm going to get a number today in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't know the God I serve, but I'm going to get a number today in the name of Jesus that woman looked at me, she said, um, I heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard of it. My God. You can try me because I know he works too. You better talk about like, it. All right, now. I have to fight. Come on. The righteous take it by force. Come on. Yeah, come you see these words that you read in this scripture is nothing. It means something. You think if you sit there and shut your mouth, you're going to get anything? You think you're going to get your breakthrough and you sit there and shut your mouth? You better open your mouth. Zion! Time to come back. Hallelujah. 
Oh, you talking around. So we went back outside, and I said, I don't know. 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 I'm trusting God. I'm seeing breakthrough for me in Jamaica when I was trying to pay my rent in Jamaica. That's another testimony. And that woman came with all the people standing outside that bank. That woman came and she said, You, miss, give me your money and I'll make the deposit. Everybody else, they stood like this. They looked, they're like, And we've been standing up there this whole time and nobody came and asked us that we could make our deposit. And she just came and she stood there. I turned around and I looked at them people and I said, let the word work. I was using the word. I was at the door and I was using the word. Talk about the word. I was using the word. <laughs> and that bank manager came out and got my money and I was the only one. I said, I got to pay the rent today. I don't want to have to pay a late fee. Hello. She looked at Miss Williams, come take your deposit. Thank you, baby. I said, I love you, baby. Thank you. <laughs> I always should have that. Are you kidding me? All the goes. I went back outside and I said, how am I going to get in this place, Lord? But I know I got to get in. I got to push. Because the devil don't want me to get my license. And I'm not going to be put out no rules in 2016. So I went back and I joined the line. And I'm standing there in line. And this man came up to me and tapped me on the shoulder like this. Miss, I have two extra numbers. Would you like one? Come on. Oh yeah, I'm above, I'm seated. Come on. I'm above principalities and powers. Oh, yeah. Rulers of darkness. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Heavenly places. Christian, body of Christ, where are you seated? You gotta let Satan know where you're seated. Amen. Amen. Hello. You can't take the devil down here in this realm on earth. No. You gotta go above that. Heavenly. Yes. Come on. Oh yes. Higher, higher, higher. My God. So listen, am I still stuck on verse one? <laughs>